I guess what was the triggering point to what I'm doing now is when my brother started studying architecture. My interest grew from either in trying to copy some of these structures on a computer or kind of inspired by drawing similar things. The more I looked at those images, the more I realized that I wasn't really interested in, in architecture. I mean, or what those images really were in the real world, or how those images came to exist. I rather was interested in the images themselves. My name is uh, Davide Quaiola. I'm a visual artist, uh, director, graphic designer, and a sort of mixer of lots of different things. I've always been very inspired by, by the paintings of Kandinsky, which are obviously based on, on, on sound, but he started calling his paintings composition with a certain number, which is a, which is a, a musical term. And what, what is kind of fascinating about his work is that he developed a proper sort of system, in a way, of representing his sound. A system that was based on very primitive geometries, and he had a, a, a vision through which he developed this series of paintings. It's this general vision, this general aesthetics that I'm very interested in, this kind of relationship between form, between space, and between geometry. So I run these this, uh, few projects of pure sound visualization. There have been a lot of experiments in different directions into to almost develop some kind of system through which uh, visualizing these, these sounds, like a sort of developing my own language, in a way. And every project is not just about making a specific film or a specific setup of an installation, but rather exploring a topic and then coming out with many different uh, artworks, from prints to a linear film to maybe a multi-screen immersive installation of the same, of the same work. The, the Strata series started as a project that wasn't called Strata, it was mostly a, a personal exploration of uh, Roman Baroque churches. I think they have attached a quite strong weight of uh, cultural, historical sort of significance, and if you live in a place like that, you tend to be overwhelmed by this kind of significance, this kind of weight, rather than looking at you know, what is there uh, visually from a sort of detached point of view. And by living in London, by going back to Rome, I think I, I add this sort of feeling of detachment and really trying to look at these places in a very different way. And I start becoming incredibly fascinated by these shapes and the fact that it's somehow almost something that doesn't seem to be made by man, but it's just an icon of, of perfection. And I was very interested in trying to, to capture this, this feeling of mine of looking, of, of detachment, of looking at this stuff in a sort of decontextualized way. And generally also as a sort of exercise, as taking this finished piece of artworks, piece of architecture, and try to use them as canvas to actually paint on. Uh, so the first one was commissioned by 1.0, and uh, I made the first film about Rome. This took quite a long time to actually get the permits and be able to really go and shoot uh, in these places, places in which there's not even a body to which you can ask for permits in Rome. <laughs> so it's actually it's been kind of a challenge. And in the end, we, we managed to get permits to go and shoot right inside the Vatican. Just kind of a kind of a powerful experience. So I decided of this project of extending it and creating a new piece out of all the material that are shot in Rome. And I developed this film called Strata Number no. One. Um, which was um, an exploration of a, of a ceiling of a famous church in Rome called La Chiesa del Gesù. And by developing this project, uh, it's, I really realized that this would have become a, a series of work that is something that I wanted to explore further. I've collaborated with many musicians and many sound designers and I guess that the process is always quite different. Usually the sound in the Strata films comes afterwards, but with Mira Calix I had a quite an interesting process in the sense that she gave me the music quite well in advance and um, I've been listening to this music directly in the locations which were these cathedrals in Paris. 
So I was going around with this iPod, just listening to these tracks in, in the real space, trying to imagine you know, which one would work. So in the second strata, the actual edit, the actual films develops on a musical structure that was there since the beginning. All these strata projects, they're all tied together. I see them almost as a unique project that develops over time. And the project started with this idea of exploring churches, but more and more I became kind of fascinated by this idea of cataloging art uh, objects in a way, and started becoming quite obsessed with this idea of working with a museum, trying to really work with, with a collection of a museum and do a sort of catalogation work, exploration work on the pieces of this museum. So it's a commission from the Palais des Beaux-Arts. It's a piece that explores the section of the Flemish painting collection that they have there, mostly focusing on some paintings from Rubens and Van Dyck, which I've done mostly in collaboration with a photographer called James Madcraft. And we've been developing some kind of techniques through which we do lots of HDR photography and we tile them together. So some of these images are incredibly large, maybe more than 20,000 pixels by 20,000 pixels, very kind of large photographic base. Then this photographic base, it's, it's the sort of uh, raw material through which we run this analysis. I think it's, it's quite an interesting process in, in this film, in this new installation work I'm making, from the discoveries, you know, of what's really inside these paintings through this analysis, this custom software analysis, and also what will be the actual final installation, which is going to be this uh, large diptych. So these two large vertical objects of six meters high, and there will be a special kind of surround sound throughout the old atrium of the museum that will describe what's going on. So this one on the left is from Las Meninas, uh, from Velázquez, and this one is L'Immacolata Concezione of Tiepolo. And basically bo both films are kind of running parallel in the installation and it's this kind of big immersive black space. This custom software analyzes a um, different feature of an image and then choose to apply sort of clouds of points to these different layers of, of analysis. And these clouds of points are, are, are connected with a, a triangulation algorithm. And then for each one of these polygons find in this mesh, he also goes and analyzes what color is behind that and he goes on an average of the pixels that are there. And we can turn on this kind of colored polygons. So these geometries that we generate in this software, which can be quite complex, so a few hundreds of thousands of polygons and points and, and, and so on, are exported from the software into uh, different formats, into different files, also as a 3D mesh. This 3D mesh is then imported into some other uh, 3D animation software through which it's animated and rendered. And I had quite a big render farm to do this. I think it's exactly six months now since I've done the shoot, still not, not finished. So it's, it's, um, yeah, it's been quite intense. <laughs> it's kind of an interesting process in a way because you, you take really something that is the symbol, the icon of perfection, something that is the finished piece of art that is hanging into a museum, which is one of the most important museums in Europe, and you actually take it as a starting point to create some new artworks, and then these new artworks, it is then, goes back into the museum. Wherever the actual mesh is deforming itself, it is applying a certain material of a certain color when it's not deforming, it's showing the original, the original painting. So the film is really about this kind of dialogue of this sort of two dimension, you know. I mean, it's somehow imagining what could be behind the painting or what could be pushing out and have this dialogue between these very, very different kind of entities that somehow share so much in common. It's, it's, it's kind of interesting, obviously, what is happening in the game industry and, and then this new, more and more powerful computers and, and graphics card that allows incredible visualizations. And I think we are already to a point in which stuff start to look quite photorealistic. And I think this is something that I'm really 
looking forward to because I, I, it's quite important in my work to have some kind of realism behind these digital artifacts, these digital objects, you know, something that you can relate to as, as a tangible object. Now that it's really getting there to a point of becoming possible to do photorealistic stuff in, in real time, that's, uh, that's something very, very fascinating. of inspired by drawing similar things. The more I looked at those images, the more I realized that I wasn't really interested in, in architecture. I mean, what those images really were in the real world, how those images came to exist. I rather was interested in the images themselves. I guess what was the triggering point to what I'm doing now is when my brother started studying architecture. My interest grew from either in trying to copy some of these structures on a computer or... My name is uh, Davide Quayola. I'm a visual artist, uh, director, graphic designer, and a sort of mixer of lots of different things. I've always been very inspired by by the paintings of Kandinsky, which are obviously based on, on, on sound. Patios started calling his paintings composition with a certain number, which is a, which is a, a musical term. And what, what is kind of fascinating about his work is that he developed a, a proper sort of system, in a way, of representing his sound. A system that was based on very primitive geometries, 